Are you ready for this? Hold on just a wee second. <laughs> now it is Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. Today's episode, we're talking about Christmas. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to today's episode of the vlog and you've probably guessed it by now, it's about Christmas because it is Christmas, Christmas 2019 and it's great to be speaking with all of you guys over the holiday period. I hope you're having a great time with your family, with your friends, whatever it is you enjoy doing, chilling out, going out and adventuring. Um, happy Christmas, I'm really really glad that you guys have been here over the last year and years and are here over this holiday period. And I'm gonna do a couple of very special episodes for you coming right up, starting in today's episode, Christmas talk. Scotland's Christmas traditions, and then talking about some of America's as well. I think these lights are gonna like confuse and blind some people, so I'm gonna just turn them off. Quite a novel wee jumper though, nonetheless, eh? Well guys, thank you very much for being here. If you're new, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below. It'll be great to have you part of this family going forward. And I've got a bit of news for you to break early on in today's episode. I've got some major plans this year to do some really cool things. For example, write an ebook, which I'm very excited about, all about Scotland, my home country, and I very much want you guys to be a part of that. And the way I'm gonna be putting out news there for people to find out first about my new book and who can get it and when you can get it and even early reads and all that kind of stuff, the only way is gonna be on my mailing list. So if you want to be first to know about the book as it's gonna come out and all that kind of stuff, all about Scotland and tips and what it's all gonna be about, you're gonna find out on my mailing list. So make sure you're part of that. My email club down below, there is a link. Sign up, it will be great to have you on board for that and I'll be giving you some news on that in the very near future. But today's Christmas, we're talking about Christmas and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about some Scottish Christmas traditions which are maybe a little bit unique different from what you guys might be used to and then comparing them to some of the things I've learned about the Americas. It goes way back, Scotland was a very strong religious country in the past, not so much anymore but it was very very strong and that was the roots of the country basically. And I bet you didn't know this, so you might know it, but a lot of people won't and I certainly didn't know it until very recently, Christmas was banned in Scotland for 400 years and for that amount of time you were not allowed to practice Christmas, it was out of the question, and that was all thanks to the Presbyterians. And it was an act in 1640 that made the celebration of the Yule Festival, which is what it was known back then, banned. That was repealed in 1712, but the Presbyterian Church, who were an authority back then, largely frowned upon Christmas for a long time thereafter, and Scotland didn't even really get into Christmas that much until the mid 20th century guys, like really recently. Of course people have always celebrated Christmas in Scotland in different senses but I wanted to put that out there first of all. It's a unique thing about Scotland that not many people know. Scotland had banned Christmas. It was off the table. It was not part of our yearly celebration. Hogmanay is another story. New Year's Eve. I'll be talking about that in another video but Christmas was just not a thing. I don't even know why, I don't really understand it. Why would the Presbyterians want to ban Christmas? Christmas was a low key event in Scotland until 1958. Like that was yesterday pretty much. That is when we first actually had it as a national holiday. But if we look even further back, actually there was always celebrations around this time of year, not quite the 25th of December, but maybe the 21st, 22nd, around the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. Pagans and the Druids who had settled Scotland, the land that we know as Scotland today, were very much into celebrating the winter solstice. There's lots of theories why they celebrated that date. Maybe it was like the, the start of something new. The days were only gonna get longer from there on in. It was the end of the harshest weather. Well, that's a bit debatable to be honest with you. But nonetheless, we know that the winter solstice was very important for the early, early, early Scottish people. And a lot of the pagan sites you'll see around Scotland are very much set up for the winter light to beam through things and through gaps and all that kind of stuff, like the circle standing stones. Well, winter solstice very much lines up with those stones at Clavacairns, for example. So that was always a big part of Scottish Christmas tradition. It seems like a very, very long away, far back thing to be talking about, the pagans, but they brought mistletoe into their house around this time of year, around the solstice, because the mistletoe was seen by the pagans as a sign or a helper of fertility. I'm not really sure the technicalities of that, but that's what it was seen as. And that is probably why it is a Christmas tradition nowadays to have mistletoe hanging above doors and you need to kiss underneath it, right? something to do with fertility way back in the pagan days, but that was a Scottish thing, well, the people who originally settled Scotland. And I think a lot of modern day Christmas traditions that stem from Scotland and are around the world really can kind of stem back to these ancient people, the pagans, they burnt 
logs, right, with an old woman's face in it, right? And it was they thought that they, if they burned this log, it would rid them of bad luck that they had built up over the year. That's the Yule log that people traditionally burn around the world at Christmas now. So the Celts, who mostly came from the kind of West Coast area, Ireland and all that, they had different traditions all in their own right, and a lot of these have kind of been mixed up in today. And they started to think of burning candles. They had the night of the candles. That was their Christmas. They placed candles in their windows to guide spiritual people on their journeys. I didn't know any of this. This is all new to me. A lot of the traditions that we do at Christmas nowadays, we take for granted as just being simply Christian. But actually, they have many, many different origins and influences. I'm not sure if mince pies is a very, very Scottish thing. British thing, we have mince pies here. Basically, a mince pie is not mince meat, right? A mince pie for us is basically a pastry that is filled with fruits, sweet fruits made into a kind of jam. The pastry on the outside is a bit like shortbread. They are very, very delicious, very easy to eat a lot of them, right? But back in the day, and this is why they're actually called mince pies, they used to put everything in there and including mince meat. And it was seen as a very quick and easy and cheap way to feed a lot of people. So they used to share that among communities and friends and family and all that kind of stuff. But as part of Scotland's ban on Christmas that happened all those years ago, Mince pies were also outlawed and anybody who baked them would be in massive trouble because it would have been a sign of them celebrating Christmas. Thankfully, that is not a thing anymore. So that's the real kind of history and tradition of Scotland's Christmas. There are lots of influences between the pagans, the Celts, and of course the Christianity, that all mixed together to create like a lot of the traditions that we have nowadays. And what is a modern Scottish Christmas all about? To be honest with you, this is where I'm going to find it tricky because I don't think it's different whatsoever really from how you guys might celebrate around the world and in North America, Canada and the United States. It's about family, right? Christmas Day is usually the big thing. We wake up nice and early, get breakfast and rip into the presents as soon as possible, basically, and eating a lot of food and usually drinking quite a lot as well. That is to, tends to be what our Christmas in Scotland is like. And it's it's quite similar for you guys in the Americas, right? Although you do have something really weird called eggnog, which we do not have. And it sounds bizarre. Is it anything to do with eggs and you drink it? That is weird, all right? I don't know what eggnog is, but I might have to try it. But I do know that by state by state, you do have some very unique things that happen throughout the Christmas period in the United States. For example, in mobile or mobile, mobile, mobile. There's a difference for you. Alabama, there is the biggest ever festival of elves in the world, or every year they try and beat the world record, am I right? In Alaska, there are some Russian Christmas traditions which don't even celebrate on the 25th of December. And I didn't know this before, but apparently Alaska has got a big Russian Orthodox community. Chandler, Arizona, has the world's biggest, and I suspect one of the only tumbleweed Christmas trees. I mean, that, that's quite fascinating, but bizarre. I guess that's a very specific, unique cultural thing pertaining to the desert. In Maryland, Baltimore, there's a whole block, an entire block which gets decked out in Christmas lights known as the Miracle of 34th Street. And in Minnesota, you guys eat, instead of turkey or chicken or whatever, they eat something called lutefisk. I don't know if that's how you say it properly, but lutefisk is something that comes from the, the Scandinavians. Presumably a lot of Scandinavians settled there. And it's like jellied fish, jellied smoked fish. It's, it looks a bit nasty, not sure if everybody will like that, but apparently that's a big thing in that part of the world. And this is one of my favourite ones, right? In 1787, it was said that George Washington himself brought a camel to his home in Mount Vernon for Christmas. And every year since then, the people of that local area have put on display a Christmas camel, a real camel that they put out in a farmer's field or something like that. But for tradition, this, this local Christmas camel a bit of a local celebrity and it even takes photos with everybody. Quite a cool thing, I do like that. But that just shows you, you know, every state in America has its own different things. You know, in Scotland we're pretty, we do love Christmas, we enjoy it, but it's good to see these little quirks that you guys have state by state. And I want to hear more, so if you guys have your own Christmas traditions that you do, very specific and unique to your area, wherever it is that you live, please let me know down below. And it is interesting because I've traveled quite a bit and I've spent a lot of Christmases in, for example, South America, in Brazil. And actually I would say New Year's Eve is a much bigger deal than the Christmas day itself. So everybody has a really late Christmas Eve meal with their family, 11 p.m., 10, 11 p.m., and then opens the presents around midnight, all right? The moment it turns the 25th of December, I'm not sure how Santa Claus has any time to come in without anybody noticing in that setup, but that's what happens. Everybody opens their presents as soon as it gets to midnight, essentially. And then the last year that I was there during Christmas, after we opened the presents, 
One in the morning, we all went out to the bar and everybody had a big night out until six in the morning. So that was certainly different. But you know what, I think in Scotland, we, we just like a kind of quiet one, enjoy ourselves, but really taking the time to, to have time off work, to meet family and friends you've not seen for a while and have a bit of a blether, and also drink a good whiskey. Since it's Christmas, I've actually got a couple of things to open. And speaking of whiskey, I got a message from Johnny Walker the other day saying they had a Christmas present for me. I'm, I'm gonna open it and see. It's a big box, it's just arrived. Kind of bad luck to be opening presents at this time already. A couple of days before Christmas, right? What have we got? Looks like got two bottles in here. Not sure if you can hear that, but it's kind of like gurgling around. One. What's a hay? Stable in Bethlehem. No. Not what's in here. There's nothing Christian about this. Two bottles, wow. This is not a sponsor or anything, I just had this nice wee gift from, I think Johnny Walker? The winter is coming and Scotch is officially back in the realm. Enjoy the latest Game of Thrones collection from Johnny Walker this Christmas. Best wishes Johnny Walker himself. Well that's really nice, and then let's see what we've got here. Ooh. That is a limited edition Johnny Walker Game of Thrones themed blended whiskey. There's another one, maybe it's the same thing. Another Johnny Walker Game of Thrones themed bottle of whiskey. That is more towards ice, ice and fire. Um, I must admit, I'm probably not gonna be drinking these. These are kind of collectible items and I think they will make their way behind me where that other lot of whiskey is onto my shelf where they can be admired as a background prop rather than actually something I'm gonna drink. They are blended whiskies, and um, no doubt they're very good, but they're collectibles. I don't think these are for opening. These are for keeping good. Maybe a Game of Thrones fan in about 50 years from now will want to buy them from a million quid each, who knows? Let me just put that up there behind me. So thanks very much to Johnny Walker for that, but um, I've also got another package here. Um, quite a noisy one. I'm not sure what this could be. Let's get into that. What is this? This, guys, is a little bit weird. What on earth is that? What? Two of them. Bear, bell bear bells. Hold... Uh, hold on a wee minute, I get it. Alright, if you guys watch my videos from North Carolina, you would have seen me freaking out in the woods because I thought there might be bears. Presumably, these are to fend off bears. Um, there's no note or anything inside, so I don't know who it's from. I can tell you from the state, it's from Los Angeles, California. But that's as much as I know. So thank you very much if you're watching to whoever bought this. Um, I'll put these on my shelves behind me as well. Um, I won't have to use them to fend off any bears here in the UK. But that's a very, very um, good interest and kind thought. Thank you. I'll certainly bring these along the next time I come to the state in bear territory. And last but not least, I actually got another box to open. Wow, lots of presents for me. This is brilliant. And this has come all the way from China. Somebody has sent me a piece of technology. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Um, but let's just get into it and see. I'm very curious. I've actually had this for a few weeks. And I've been wanting to open it on camera and find the right opportunity. Well, Christmas is surely it. Wow, it's a drone. Look at that. It must be tiny because the box is tiny. This is exciting. The left top portable and folding drone. And this is a Christmas present, guys, because... Let me tell you, it has now become near impossible to fly a drone in the UK because of all the rules and regulations. But I think this might actually be a way around it. It looks very, very small. And if it's under 250 grams, which I think this could possibly be, then I'll be able to fly it. No problems. I don't want to break anything. Wow, look at that. I mean, essentially it's just like a cylinder thing. It's like something out of Star Trek or Star, War Star Wars. What's that thing? Tekka, what's that robot thing? I mean, does it fold out? I mean, how does it fly? Or maybe even like a Dalek out of Doctor Who. There's a camera there. I can see a camera. 
What a bizarre looking thing. It, it, does this fly? I have literally no idea, guys, how this works. If it works. Or what the heck to do with it. But if it's a drone, I'm going to fly it at the nearest opportunity. Christmas has come early, it seems, in this house. But anyway, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for watching, as always. And happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. However you want to celebrate over the next week or two, I hope you have a great time. Hope you enjoy it. I've got a lot of videos coming your way. I'm going to Iceland in a couple of days' time, which is going to be great. I'm also doing a new series all about Hogmanay in Scotland, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to spend Hogmanay in Edinburgh and really show you guys what it's all about. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Looking forward to that and looking forward to bringing you on that journey. But until then, until the next episode, I hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year and... A good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world. Take care. <laughs>